Hey guys, can you hear me? You can turn up the gain up there. All right. Oh, you don't have to. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Not really. All right. I can speak louder. Yep, and I will turn up my audio. All right, Dennis. I think you're uh, you're good to go. Yep. Yep. And uh, actually, I want to... can you see my screen? Yep. Anyone uh, use uh, Skype on a regular basis and can tell me how to switch this thing around really quick? All right, can you push your slides again? All right, all right, your slides are up and so are you. Yeah, I'm to me too. Okay, guys. Can you hear me? I can start, right? Yep, your screen is black, but... Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, because I'm um, switch on the Skype. Okay. What happened? You see my screen, huh? Yep, it's up. Uh-huh. Okay, guys, I'm starting. Sorry for the periodical interrupting because uh, in Moscow time is later, the internet is stupid, you know. So that's. Let me start. But before I start my presentation, uh, I want to show you the short. that was planted by developers of the game is a beautiful reflection of current situation with the world. My name is Denis Makrushin. I'm a security researcher and I present the expertise of global research and analysis team at Kaspersky Lab. 
and I try to show you how our smart cities, smart hubs, smart things become stupid. And I think the beautiful illustration of current situation with IoT, with Internet of Three Things, things, with Internet of Things, uh, is a uh, the short message that was published on Mitre website, and of course you know what is that, what is a Mitre, what is a CVA, yeah? If you know, please applaud again. Some noise. Okay. Okay. Nice, nice. Uh, you know what is that. So the short version of the message is something like that. But guys, please stop. We're receiving a lot of information about, about um, vulnerabilities in IoT. We have no resources to allocate the CVE numbers to proceed all your requests. Please stop. So I think it's terrible, yeah? But you know that it's uh, not a game. You're here, but you're, it's, you're not in the game. You're not in the watchdogs. We're living in smart homes. We're walking, we're traveling in smart cities. Periodically, we would have been uh, something like the smart hospitals, but it's not a game. It's a terrible situation. For example, for example, you can tell me that, uh, Dennis, man, stop, please. Um, it's not actual for me because I have no something smart in my home. I have, uh, I have no something smart in my city, in my uh, office. But I think you have something smart. For example, IP camera. Do you have the IP camera? Please applaud who has a IP camera in the home or in the office. Woo! Only one person. Only one person and, and four hands probably, yeah? Because I can see here, but I can listen here. Only one person. Okay, do you have notebooks, laptops? Guys, of course you have laptops with the bad camera. It's a classic of gender, okay. Or another example. A baby monitor, probably your grandfather, grandmother, or mother and father, and you have uh, the baby monitor. Do you have it now? Oh, okay, now. Okay. Uh, only one person. Who is, <laughs> please send your kid on Twitter, okay? Uh, nice, nice. You have a baby monitor. Or uh, another example, probably you have coffee machine, smart coffee machine, huh? I have, I have. Here is my head. Uh, but for me personal, in office, in office we have something like the smart coffee machine. So, but if you have something from this list, probably you are vulnerable. For example, IP camera. It has no authentication in most of our cases, yet. Yeah? Someone can, could use uh, the Shodan. You, of course, you know what is a Shodan. It's a search engine, special search engine. Uh, and then you can uh, extract a lot of sensitive pictures and sensitive streams, personal streams, or streams from office, and you know, and probably I can show you how, it's quite simple, you need to just input this request and show an engine. Let me show you how this is simple from researcher point of view. You don't need to be a researcher, of course. It's a Russian connection. <laughs> oh, without, without any results. Ah, sorry, port. It's the wrong port, yeah. Probably from someone in the audience in the hall, it's a boring little bit, but it's just a case to just show. I need to show you how it's simple to extract the streams. Not okay. A screen shot because mistake. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Somewhere in the United States, the camera installed in the front of marketplace, probably. Oh, <laughs> the goal, interesting. Hmm, probably it's your flat, huh? guys. Can you recognize your flat in Poland? So that's just an example. Just an example how simple to extract some sensitive information. Another example, the smart coffee machine. This stupid thing has a smart features like, please, 
install some inst install some application on your phone, and then I can prepare the coffee for you. So you install the application, you send information that I, I need a coffee with a uh, decaffeinated coffee without any milk and a lot, with a lot of sugar. So please prepare. And this stupid thing has another feature. It connects with you and with your Wi-Fi point uh, using the non-encrypted connection. And the, your information about your Wi-Fi hotspot connection, uh, the password, transmits in clear text, of course. So someone could extract the info, could intercept the traffic, and uh, he could prepare the coffee for you in the worst case, probably. Or another terrible scenario. What do you think? If you have a passport, if you can intercept the connection between between uh, mobile phone, a victim's mobile phone, and between uh, this coffee machine, what the adversary, what the, the hacker, cyber criminal, what he can do with that? Your ideas, please, your scenarios. Just one, one person, please, the random scenario of terrible situation with that. No? No idea? Okay, uh, someone could use this like an entry point. If this thing installed in an office, it could be like entry point for office network, for example. Another example. Someone could overload the hardware of the coffee machine and as a result he can burn the office or he can burn the flat. Terrible scenario. Or another system that could be found um, if you use uh, uh, search engines like Shodan or Census or Google it uh, even. And what is that? Could you recognize the scheme? What the, is a... Uh, uh, Manufacturer, what does the enterprise, the type of the enterprise, which which use this thing? What is that, guys? Your ideas. The turbine system that installed where? I can hear you probably not. Probably you have a lot of ideas, but I can hear you. Okay. Uh, is a windmill, is a windmill system. So as a result, anyone could use the front end like that application dashboard for this windmill system, and tr and monitors the parameters of the system. And in some cases, he could change these parameters, and I think uh, it could be catastrophic for everyone. But you can still, uh, uh, you can still tell me that, man, Dennis, I have no smart things. I have no smart coffee machines. So probably this is uh, only for the best scenarios, for your scenarios actual for video games. I think not, because I think even in the building where you are located now, currently, this building contains something smart in the systems, like uh, building management system or building automated system. It's a rotor, it's a big, huge rotor uh, that connects various systems in the building. For example, traffic, uh, not traffic, uh, lighting system, conditioner system, and classic TCP IP networks. And as a result, someone could use the power socket to compromise the rotor and then compromise the whole system using the TCP IP uh, connection, for example. And my friend, my uh, from another company demonstrate the interesting scenario. What you can do if you compromise the system like then building your automatic system. Let me show you another video.
good individual was shot. So I think it's a terrible scenario, yeah? And it's actually right here, like in the building, like yours, the heart of the lower uh, the gun, I don't know where you are. Or another example, San Francisco scenario. Do you remember the case when um, the crypto ransomware uh, affects the public terminals, the public ticket receipts, and as a result it affects the whole transport system and stuff? You remember it? Have you heard about it? Okay, you heard about it, I hope. So, and this is a beautiful illustration that the IoT, the smart city, the smart things, already becomes public. So there's, uh, there, uh, it allows for everyone to be here from uh, Watch Dogs video game. And let me show you how. You know that a lot of public devices, like uh, terminal panels, are waiting for a hero in various in more places in I wouldn't analyze the issue of the planes because, you know, my spirit is not enough. But it's actually, it's actually even for two of too. So, and if you try to input something like uh, terminal hack uh, in YouTube, uh, you will see the little videos uh, where the hackers, where the um, adversaries try to bypass full an application, try to uh, remove it, and as a result, they can start something like the pain, or Angry Birds, or something like that. And based on the lot of video, we, we uh, create something like a scenarios methodology for security assessment. And what you can do with a public terminal? First of all, if you are a developer, or if you are just the guy uh, from the street, uh, you can use the top phasing. Top phasing is something like just job using your fingers, just manual job. And <laughs> Uh, you can try to uh, bypass the full screen application. For example, you need to tap on the corners of the public terminals if it touch screen, yeah? Uh, you can tap uh, and hold your finger for six seconds and uh, it could, as a result, you can create something like a right button click uh, even. Or you can use the data phasing if your terminal in the interface has something like, like input fields. Uh, you can input some random data like SQL injection scenarios or arbitrary strings or something like that to uh, uh, try to create some undocumented features like uh, woofer overflowing or something like that. Then you can bypass it and then you can go to the control panel, from control panel to virtual keyboard, from virtual keyboard to uh, paint or to Angry Birds. And the proof of concept on the Moscow streets. Probably you have something very similar on your streets. Uh, the terminal for, uh, for uh, you, you can, using the terminal you can rent the bike. Do you have something on your streets, guys? Yeah, okay, I heard yes. So, but, um, I sell this in San Francisco, but uh, you know that San Francisco is not a good representative city, but anyway, if San Francisco had it, I think there are other regions, like Washington DC has it too. So, Moscow has uh, this device. So, what is that? Uh, it's a sexy application from user point of view. It allows you to rent a bike, to uh, input your credit card, to pay for the rent, uh, it, it keep the deposits on your car, and then you can rent, rent the bike, you can ride it, and this is a successful story for from the user, but from the developer point of view. Uh, I think it's probably a good idea to insert uh, your application, to insert the Google widget, because it's a classic Google widget, you see it, uh, without any customization. But you know that without any customization, this plugin can, uh, contains the string, uh, which contains that contains um, something like the scale, uh, the information about copyrights, um, and if you are a user, you can send the record about error on the map, error on the vision. And if you can send the record, you can click on this status bar, 
you see this below the, curve, below the main map, you can tap on the Send the Report button. But ba um, Internet Explorer, ah, World Kids, and a little bit street magic, and you can launch the virtual keyboards. Yeah, you have any types of input. You have the mouse and you have a virtual keyboard. It's a good scenario for cyber criminal, guys. And as minimum, we want to check who we are. We are admins, worth cases, right? So uh, we have created the report for developers and for for owners, and send a summon for that. Guys, please don't use non-customized uh, widgets. Uh, please restrict the village access. Don't use administrative villages. Uh, restrict access to the internet because we can use the Facebook or we can use the Twitter using your terminal. Terrible. And default deny all white, non white listed applications. Just restrict all exe files. And as a result, we received the info that, guys, thank you. you our clients have been saved. Um, and you save the world. You help us. Thank you. Thank you. And I think it's a good uh, finishing of the story for any researcher. So thank you guys for your attention. Where's my applause? <laughs> Where's my applause? Okay. Sorry, this story, this presentation could be finished like this, like this, but one month later. The same situation, guys. The same situation. So, uh, we send a message again for those guys and ask them, like, guys, why you are allow for anyone to steal the data from your terminals? Why you affect your users? So we get uh, something like a response. Uh, guys, uh, we have no priority for your cybersecurity issues. Please, we have another bag. We have another. Have a lot of. Uh, priority. Our cyber security is something like attract. Please demonstrate for us something like proof of concept. Demonstrate the real vectors. Okay, Google. How we can exploit it? Uh, for example, you can use the mini case. It's just for example. Do you know what is a mini case? Please let make let's make some noise. Who who knows what is that mini case? Two persons. Probably three persons. Uh, how many persons? Please, applause again the whole audience. Whole audience. Applause again, guys. Uh, okay, the mini case. What is that mini case? Uh, it's a special tool for pen testers, but uh, uh, it's also uh, uh, used by, by malware developers too. Now, we sensitive information like passwords uh, and other credential data from the current session of operating system. So anyone could use the mini case on this information about session, extract the credentials in clear text. And you know what? These credentials are actual for each machine in the Moscow. Was actual, of course, in each machine. What you can do with that? Of course, you can compromise, compromise uh, the users of this, of this machine. In. You can extract the payment data from databases. You can extract a lot of sensitive information like telephone numbers, like um, your email numbers, verified email numbers and telephone numbers, and you can sell it on the black market. Or you can build a botnet for that. You can build a botnet for mining, for DDoS attack, and just imagine the conversation, that, just imagine the situation. The conversation between system administrator and his boss in the small internet shop. Boss, we have been deducted by two other terminals. What? <laughs> but it's actual. I think I think it's actual. Uh, you know the story with Brian Krebs and uh, DDoS attack based on vulnerable AP cameras. Of course you know it. So this is the same scenario. You can build a botnet. Or another example of another terminal. Uh, it's something like the cinema tickets machine. You can buy a ticket in cinema. So you can tap on the main window. You see this with this window. You can tap the button, hold the, your uh, finger for six seconds, and it um, you, you will receive something like the right button to be given. Property, 
Contro panel, virtual keyboard, Angry Birds. <laughs> Another example, uh, probably a machine that was installed in some government facility. It has a simple function. You just need to input your data, like your name, your address, and then you receive uh, the, uh, the paper the little piece of paper with your data. The simple business function, but uh, it does it with the main feature. Uh, this, the window with the printing parameters appears for five seconds. What you can do with that, guys? Your idea. Uh, this is a Russian, te Russian text, but uh, I think uh, you remember the classic printing window. So what you can do with that? Any ideas? Any ideas? Just five seconds to think. You can change the printing parameters, then you can start the control panel, then you can run to virtual keyboard, then angry birds. And another example with data phasing. It's um, just a terminal in museum, but uh, you can insert something like SQL injection scenario and you receive the error that, sorry, I can't proceed your request. Tap on the error, control panel, run to the virtual keyboard, Angry Birds. Well, you can tell me that, man, probably it's actual only for Russia, because probably you have a vulnerability in your DNA to build some vulnerable terminals. Uh, we're traveling uh, around the world, uh, we have found a lot of interesting terminals, like this, this one. Uh, probably it's Korean. Yeah, it's Korean terminal in Korea, in Korean Imperial Museum. So, uh, you can tap on the corner, uh, you can switch on the full screen application, you can start the session, and as a result, you can start the Angry Birds whole malware. Another example, uh, it's a terminal in Switzerland, and you can see the items, the information about the items, but also you can tap for five seconds and you know, hold your finger, and you receive the right button click. Then you receive a lot of information about internal infrastructure. And you can compromise it. And let me show you how. It's a short demo. Just one or two seconds. Then you get you get the menu. Using the menu, you can start an application. And that application, you can start the uh, Something like the con not the control panel directly, but you can start uh, the help center or something like that. Using the help center, you can start the control panel and reverse on or something else. Or probably seeing this terminals, not the terminals, it's classic PC, full, uh, full screen applications. We have seen it in airports. When you can use it, you pay for the internet access and then you use it for the surfing, for internet surfing. It's easy to bypass it, guys. You know how, of course you know how. Alt, tab. So, then you can extract a lot of sensitive info about the users, about the internal infrastructures, or you can extract the verified email address. It's terrible, terrible thing for grandfathers and grandmom. Or taxi stuff. Oh, I like this, team, this topic. Uh, you know the taxi stuff? It's something like... Uh, Android-based applications, Android-based uh, tablets, table PC, but installed behind the head uh, of the driver or of the second passenger. And you can use it for surfing. You can use it. For to, you can use it to leave your information, of course. But you can also to bump, you, you use it to bypass it and start something like uh, your own scenario or your own malware in the worst case. And as a result, you can modify the applications. You can track the passengers, you can make some photos of the passengers because it's classic tablet PC and the result it has uh, the, that camera for that. So you can take a pictures, a lot of pictures of the passengers. It's a privacy, I, I think uh, it's a privacy leakage. Another example, what you can do with that? You can extract the email addresses, as I told you, the names, the databases, this. you can use it for social networks, uh, attack to, you can attack the user who previously left his data there and you can create something like the targeted attack on the user. Or you can use the social engineering, of course, the phishing, uh, the same thing, something like info, 
about new uh, discounts and updates, please click this link or something like that. You know how it was. So what you need to do with that? If you are a system administrator of these stupid things, please don't use the administrative privileges. Don't use the, re the restrict access to the internet and use the default denial technologies. It's just three simple things. If you are a user, don't insert your credit card in the machine because it's dangerous. If you have ability to pay using cash, please use cash. And if you, of course, if, if, if you found the bug, please send the report to the de developers. What about the situation with the traffic camera, with the, our traffic, with our smart roads in our smart cities? You know, it's a stupid thing. It just has a simple business function. It fixed. It uh, monitors the speed and then it forward the speed to the, your server, the speed data. So the simple business function, yeah, but it has vulnerability too. It has open Bluetooth connection. For what? For what? What do you think? Okay, no idea. Uh, or probably if you have an idea, something like for for service for service purposes. Yeah, of course, it uses for service purposes, but it has the Bluetooth connection without any authentication. So anyone could connect using Bluetooth, then could extract the embedded system, then could modify the embedded system and upload it again. So he could be like a ghost on the roads because he could add. Uh, his own car, his own car in the database, like some exception. Don't fix my speed, please. So as a result, you are ghost on the road. Or another example is a traffic camera or network of traffic. Someone, a cyber criminal, has a, a ability to extract information about the streams, about the internal databases on the camera. It just has a simple function too. Uh, it gets something like the speed parameters, then it has, it, it, need, uh, it monitors the numbers, the special numbers on the cars, and then compare the numbers, the internal database of stolen cars numbers. Then if it number contains, it sends information to the internal, to the internal servers. So the simple business functions, but it has open, open port that has no authentication procedures, and as a result, someone could extract the streams, video streams from the camera, and could extract, of course, uh, the information about the stolen cards. Or, or uh, cyber prank, <laughs> cyber criminals could use it to add their own cars to the exception list, and as a result, they're like ghosts on the roads. So, if you're a developer, please restrict access to your devices. Please use the special special sub networks uh, like the military zone for those devices. And use the full deny technologies to restrict uh, the, the applications, to restrict the some something like additional exe files or the Linux based files. So searcher, if you're a user, if you found a bad <laughs> but worst case is when your medicine becomes smart. If you are actually visiting uh, uh, your medical facilities, you will know that a lot of devices, a lot of medical devices, uh, become become smarter and smarter. For example, the typical uh, typical network of uh, med medicine of hospital of current hospital or medicine. What is that? First of all, it's huge machines, huge and expensive machines that connected to PC, or that could be uh, a PC uh, that could be a network host too. So it doesn't require PC connection and because it's something like PC too. Uh, then uh, it could be PAX system. PAX, you know what is that? It's something like Picture achievement communication system, something like that, a lot NAS storages for for data, for medical data. NAS, of course you have a NAS in your home. Because 
Well, of course, you, uh, you have a router and the most uh, models of the routers has NAS storage features. So the PEC system is something like, like NAS. We had a little both. <laughs> okay, guys. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Nice one. And can tune my dialogue monologue. So, the PAX servers. What is a PAX? It's something like the NAS storages. Of course, you have a NAS if you have a router, the high end router. Probably it has a NAS network attached storage. So, the PAX. Is a similar for medicine purposes. So the devices, the huge and expensive machines like MRI or CT or cardiographs, sends the info like image decom. Image decom is a JPEG format for medicine purposes too. It's something like the pictures. It's a format for pictures. They send the information about patients uh, to the back servers, and as a result. The operator could analyze the data. Uh, my patients uh, for analyzing the the common age. This is simple. And theoretically, what could be connected to the internet? Of course, all PCs in this scheme, all PCs, and packs, probably PAX services could be connected to the internet too. And still open the questions about MRAs, about huge and expensive machines. But let's start to uh, scale the problem. Let's start to create something like the thread landscape of medical devices. Uh, if you try to input the string decom part uh, in Shodan, you will receive, probably you will receive the infos about decom servers and decom devices. Let me show you how it's simple to find something medical in the internet. So, Dennis, are you going to push uh, slides again? Uh, you can see my screen now, no? Huh? I see your face only. You see my face only? Oh, sorry, because. I will try to show you the short and scenario. Probably you need, mm -hmm. I need to. Okay, can you see my, see my screen now? Oh. Okay, guys. Do you see my screen? No? Okay, okay. Let me continue my presentation because uh, probably it's a stupid internet connection.
Okay. So, uh, guys, can you see my presentation now? No, not yet. Uh, doesn't seem like you're sharing your screen. You guys, someone. Yeah, you see my presentation now, guys. Oh, no. Uh, slowly, internet connection, slowly. Nothing. Still, uh, still hourglassing. Um. I will call you now. I will call you because I heard. Huh? Go ahead. Yep. Can I recall you? Let Let me recall you guys. Your face still. All right. Nice, nice. Let me get to you. So, uh, what could be connected to the internet? Of course, all PCs, the back storages, and still open questions about big, huge, uh, expensive machines. And uh, you can see my screen again because I have not. Oh, no, 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 please not. Uh, yeah. Can you see my screen now? No. Oh. Nope. You can see my screen. I hope. I hope. No, no, no. no. <sighs> is, there, is there a share screen on, on the call settings? You go under call down at the bottom, it says share screen. Okay, you guys. Oh. Oh, hello. My name is Denis Makrushin. <laughs> yeah, just underneath the uh, call uh, call settings, there should be a share screen. Okay. Function. Okay, guys. So uh, this is a decom statistics. I heard some voices. Probably we have some issues. Not if not, let me continue uh, because we have a strong time frame. I have seven minutes for for these ideas. So you can use the shodan to extract information about medical equipment in the internet that's available for everyone. If you use the Shodan, you can extract the info that about thousand, thousand internet connections with the medical devices are available for everyone. Most of them, of course, in the United States. Some of them, of course, it's Honeywell's. But anyway, it's about 1,000 medical devices. 
and using the something sensitive strings, some, some sensitive um, requests like medical, clinic, cancer, or, or some another words. With the, with the next port, uh, you can extract the, some information about internal infrastructure of medical facility. So what the adversary can do with that? First of all, he can get the topology of the internal network. And he can bring his notebook to the, his laptop, uh, to the clinic, to the medical facility, and try to connect to Wi-Fi to extract some interesting rooms, uh, like cancer registry or security officer's room to extract the insensitive information. Yeah, it's useful for reconnaissance stage of targeted attacks. But you know that it don't it don't doesn't necessary for him because he could use the web web applications for PAX systems to compromise them and compromise all patients' data. For example, this is an example of uh, some. Pax Viewer, the special application for operators, uh, and this server contains another entry point to the medical data. It's vulnerable applications like Team Viewers, Apache services, etc., etc., etc. So it could be used like entry point to medical data. Another example is the Pax Systems. Uh, it's something like the web dashboard for for operators for medical facility personnel. Uh, someone could use it to compromise the medical data. And, and this example, uh, how to how easy to bypass it uh, if you use, for example, a Cirix web portal. A Cirix web portal is a PEX system that allows you to manage medicine medical data. So, but I think it's not a typical form yet. Yeah? Not typical form for a Cirix because you need to input, usually you need your password and uh, pass, password, password, and not password, password, and uh, your uh, name and minimum, the, your credentials. But it's just a one button, login. Okay, let's tap on the button. You get the administrative access on the, from the, de for the this dashboard. And of course, you can use this, this access to manage all data. You can, bypass, you can delete the information about patients. Uh, you can extract the, some sensitive information about patients. And you can add the arbitrary data. And of course, you can see some, uh, some pictures and some decon images using the dashboard. I think it's a worth cases because here in Russia, we have something like a law, uh, law uh, that uh, if you are if you are medical facility administrator, uh, probably you will be in a jail if your medical data uh, will, will be stolen. So probably you have something same in your laws too. And let, still often it questions about medical devices. Uh, we have checked. The few types of medical devices. It's expensive devices, huge, <laughs> and huge, very expensive devices. And of course it's a joke because it's a minimum two types. From technical point of view, there are two types of medical devices. There's a host oriented, that could be like a host in the network. And network, uh, so, sorry, sorry, the network oriented is like, it could be like a host in your, in your internal network. And PC oriented, host oriented, that requires the connection to workstation. So let's describe the situation with a, uh, with a PC, with a host oriented connection devices. If your adversary, you compromise the front end, you compromise the PAC system, you compromise the network, you can easily to extract the names of machine, of workstation, uh, that has a connections with uh, this those devices. For example, you can see that SRV, MAD, and something interesting. It's it's a name. It's the main names of machines that has a connections uh, have a connections with uh, those medical devices. Then uh, you can scan this machine, and you can see a lot of interesting entry points like vulnerable FTP servers, like vulnerable MySQL servers on medical machines. Even uh, the worms, the malwares, and in this case, even Half-Life Engine 
I don't know for what, but half-life engine on machine that has a connection with the medical, with the huge and expensive medical uh, device, I don't know for what, for what purposes it was installed there, but it did. But anyway, using these entry points, you can compromise it. And if you are compromise it, you can extract the process names of interesting software. And Analyzer Exam, I think it's an interesting for cyber criminal name for, for, to extract something sensitive, yeah, for, from this machine. What you can extract using this analyzer, analyzer.exe is a special software for this uh, medical diagnostic devices. Uh, using this analyzer, what can adversary can do with that? First of all, he can steal directly from this machine, he can steal the medical information. He can spoof the information from this medical machine. He can spoof the data. So I think it's a worst scenario, yeah? Because if you use it, if you are patient to use it uh, for diagnosis purposes, I think you can make the wrong diagnosis, the wrong verdict for that, for your patient. And also you can change the parameters of this machine. So probably the adversary could um, create something like special malware for that and then he could change always he could change the calibration parameters and uh, ransom from your side he could ask you please send me some money if you want to, to restore your settings and you know these huge machines uh, the, their costs about four thousand dollars and as a result you can pay for that. You need to pay for that for calibration. So it's the worst case. Or well, he can notify and help to fix the issues, but not in this world, not in the current world. Hey, Dennis. Uh, so we're we're getting a little bit over time. So we we need. Dennis, can you hear me? Hello, guys. Yes. So uh, we're, we're my connections. My connection with you is okay, now. So we're uh, we're almost getting over time, so we got to uh, we got to wrap up. So you got about another, another minute. Yes. Yes. Okay. I heard. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. I hear you, but very slow. Okay. Yes. Just few slides for you. Just few slides. Uh, if you are. If you are a system administrator in medical facility, please isolate your devices from the network. Isolate FTP servers, medical PAC system, NAS system, etc. from another system in your network. If you are a user, it's a simple, be healthy. And the last slide, you have a lot of technologies how to implement these devices in your network. And as a result, uh, you can implement not the huge, huge software based on machine learning, artificial intelligence, and etc., etc., etc. Machine learning here, machine learning there, but people still clicks on the link. So phishing attacks still actual. Uh, I think the main vulnerability is our brain. We need to create a patch for our brain vulnerability, and I think education is this patch, is the patch for us. So that's why we are here, to save the world. And the video, video. Thank <laughs> you.